Morning, everybody. So today we're gonna to look at a really common problem that happens around the house, and that is our dishes are just not getting as clean as they could. So um, <clears throat> we are gonna troubleshoot that a little bit with our dishwasher. I've done a little bit of this, but I'm gonna show you the, some of the things to look for, some of the things to, to eliminate. As it turns out, our problem is specific, I think, to the um, soap dispenser. So I'm gonna show you how to replace that today but I'm also gonna show you how to troubleshoot and some of the things you can look for in terms of your filters and those kinds of things for a GE Profile dishwasher. So welcome to DIY with the Doc. See if we can fix this thing. We're back everybody. Here is our GE Profile dishwasher. Um, it is not cleaning well. And as you can see, we still have some soap left in the dispenser and there's soap sort of dribbling down here. So we think that the problem might be with the release. You can test this, by the way, and close this. You can hear that snap. And you can test it by the release button here. Unfortunately, <clears throat> what can happen is these things can get pretty gunked up and I'll show you in the release, in the rinse thing. See how that build up? That's probably happened within this mechanism somewhere, which is probably what's getting in the way. Now this dishwasher is about eight years old, so it's probably time to uh, to do that. But I'm gonna show you kind of how to troubleshoot it as well. Uh, so stick around as we take a look at how to replace the soap dispenser on a GE Profile dishwasher. Stick with us. Back everybody. So let's say that you take your dishes out of the dishwasher, you look at one and Boy, it's just not getting as clean as you'd like. Now, that's a dirty dish, obviously, but what was happening is our dishes were coming out. They were still a little bit greasy. They'd still have a little bit sort of some fatty grease on there. There's a lot of different things it can be. So <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through the diagnostic process here. The first thing you want to do is check your filter, <clears throat> and you may also want to run what's called a clean cycle. So, And a clean cycle is really simple. It's a couple cups of white vinegar, dump it into the bottom of your dishwasher, close it up and run it on a long cycle. What that will do is it will sort of degrease your dishwasher. The challenge with that is that sometimes when you run, a, when you run that after a while, there can be lots of grease that can build up sort of along the seams. And this is your door seal. And what happened with us is we ran a clean cycle and I thought, well, hopefully that'll do it. But what had happened is the grease kind of built up under the seal of the door. So when we ran the next cycle, we had a leak. So we were able to diagnose that pretty quickly. So um, just a couple of things to look for. The first thing you want to look for is whether the um, dishwasher is getting water and those kinds of things. So what you can do, these arms come off and you just, they really just pop off. Um, and they have holes in them, and sometimes these holes will get clogged. So one way to check that, bring it over to your sink, run some water into the arms, and look to see whether any of the holes, and I think we can see here, is these holes are, are moving water pretty good. So no real problems with clogged arms on this one. So we'll go ahead and put this one back. And it just sort of pops on and then locks into place. This one, same way. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but pops off this way. Okay, <clears throat> we can take it to our sink. Yeah, no obstructed holes there. Okay, so we're in good shape with the arms not being clogged. And we are gonna go ahead and put this back. And if you can see this, this is the where it attaches. And we pop it on and lock it into place. And we're good to go. Water comes through this hole and out that out inlet. So, <clears throat> and I know that there's water sloshing around in the dishwasher. Sometimes what can happen when your dishes aren't being cleaned is that that inlet valve gets, gets clogged. <clears throat> and 
that's just a matter of pulling the dishwasher out and putting a new inlet valve on but i don't think that's the issue here because we are getting water into our dishwasher um <clears throat> the the next thing to look for is all dishwashers have a filter and this can get pretty gross and gunked up after a while our filter is right here and again pops off the same way we're going to turn and lift out okay <clears throat> and this one actually looks pretty good first time i took it out really ugly so what i have here is an old used toothbrush that i don't need anymore and what you can do is just run water through your filter you can use vinegar as well but you want to be careful vinegar vinegar is pretty corrosive but a lot of times if you have sort of a lot of fatty buildup you need the degreasing power of the vinegar to help you to take care of that but Again, this one's in pretty good shape. We're not going to need that, I don't think. But we're going to just clean this as well as we can. And you can see there is some buildup in there. But not a ton. And when I first took this thing out, man, there was, there was gunk all in here. And, and fatty deposits and everything else you can think of. So, um, so it's very helpful occasionally just to take this out. Clean it up. So now we know our filter is not the problem. That looks pretty good. You know, it, it gets it can get pretty gunked up with stuff. Okay, so our filter looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall. Okay, so now we've eliminated the the uh, intake by the fact that we have water in the in the dishwasher. We've eliminated the plugged uh, arms dis distribution arms. Uh, we could probably clean that up a little bit too. We're gonna put our filter back and again, it just pops in, locks into place, no big deal. <clears throat> we know we're getting heat as well because when we take the dishes out, they're warm. So, and this symptom here is really indicative of the fact that it could be our dishwasher um, dispenser or our soap dispenser, I'm sorry. So <clears throat> we think we're in a pretty good place here. Um, by the way, your dishwasher model number is always right here. Um, and what I recommend is take a picture, keep it in your phone that way if you ever need a part. Um, you have it all ready. So we actually have ordered our part from <clears throat> appliancepartspros.com. Those guys are amazing. I'll leave a description down below. And they sell genuine GE replacement parts. This is the dishwasher detergent dispenser, WDX 12X 24058, which is the right model, or the right one for our model. So in order to replace this, <clears throat> we are going to need to um, disconnect the dishwasher. We need to pull it out just a little bit to get access to these hinges. We're gonna need to remove the door. We're gonna work on it just over here. The actual replacement of this, <clears throat> not a big deal, doesn't take very long, but you do have to kind of do some disassembly before you get there. So stick with us. Uh, I will show you what next steps are. Let's see if we can get a new soap dispenser into this dishwasher. Hang with us. Help? You gonna help? Sully Boy, you gonna help? You gonna help with the dishwasher? No? No, you're out? Sweetie, you gonna help? You gonna help? You gonna help, buddy? What do you think? No, you're out. You gonna help? No. Okay. All right, so in order to do this repair, <clears throat> we're gonna need a number two Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna need a quarter inch nut driver. We are going to need a, oops, sorry. This is a 5 16th nut driver, quarter inch nut driver. I've got a pair of channel locks on hand just in case, an open-ended 5 8 and two Allen wrenches. And these aren't gonna turn anything. These are just gonna go into the, prop holes essentially in our door just to hold it open so that we can to put it in the proper position so that we can lift the door off so these aren't really going to be used as to turn anything they're just going to be used to prop the door open so 
Uh, and of course, our part. So let's get started. Here's a great example why it's a good idea to take all this stuff out, right? So we've taken this stuff out and what would appear to be our, right, here's our dishwasher. There's power right there. Well, that's our power, right? No, <laughs> that power's going into our garbage disposal, right? So obviously we, we also have power on the other side of this, this island. So obviously our power is over there. Um, this is the turn on, turn off for our dishwasher. Um, but our power is coming in from the plug here. So our dishwasher, in order to disconnect it, disconnect the power, um, we're going to have to get into it a little bit and we're going to have to slide the dishwasher out of its place, um, before we power it down, which is sort of un unfortunate. So what I'm going to do is find, uh, I'm going to close this so that we have some lights on and I'm going to go, uh, kill the power to the dishwasher at the uh, panel, make sure that those lights go off and that way we'll be sure that we're working safely on this thing. We've managed to kill the power. We've determined that no more lights, so we're good. Found the correct breaker. So the next step's really to lay down some towels. Because what we've got to do is we've got to take out our, take off our water supply line, which is here, right here. And we have to take out, take off our um, drain hooking into the garbage disposal. So um, let's get that started now that we've got our towel. It's gonna be to shut the water off. And this is our hot water line. You can see that coming in there. So we're gonna go ahead and shut our water off. And we're gonna use our wrench to disconnect the water line. This is going to drip. That's what the towels are for. We want to be a little bit ginger with this because we've got lots of water lines connected to the same place. Okay, so we did get a little bit of drip, and that's okay. That's what the towels are for. And then we're gonna use our 5 sixteenths to take our clamp and loosen it up. So we've got our clamp loose. We can just let that drop here. So our dishwasher is now sort of has some play in case we need to move it around. Again, here's the line and it's going behind this power line. So I'm just gonna pull that out so that if we move that, that's not being disturbed. So we are loose in this area with our dishwasher because we are gonna need to slide that out just a, just a touch. So we're gonna make sure that we have some play in both of these lines in order to do that. Otherwise, there's really no reason to disconnect those. So if you've got plenty of play in those lines, great. <clears throat> Most installations don't. So we're loose there. We'll start with uh, detaching our dishwasher from our cabinet as we're gonna need to cheat it out just a little bit. To get this thing to be able to move a little bit at all is to grab our Phillips head screwdriver and there are two, count them, one, two, screws. I'm gonna sit down so that we can get this for you. See this screw and that screw. And that is holding this dishwasher in place. So we need to take our Phillips head and just get these loose. You know what we're gonna have to do? Let's take that rack. In order to take this rack out, there's a cap that prevents this from sliding all the way out. So it's just held in with a little clip here. So what you need to do is 
press that tab that holds it in there and it'll pop right out. So we got that one. And that one. And now, that rack will slide clear. And again, these just literally pop right back on. So I like to keep everything sort of, so I know which way it goes, not that it matters. You can flip those over, but <clears throat> we are gonna need our Phillips and now we can get in, I think. Get a little bit better access to these screws. There we go. And again, what I'm gonna do is keep the screw right next to where it goes. So that way when we put it back together, we know exactly what we're doing. We know exactly where everything goes. Okay. So our dishwasher now, yep, yeah, it is loose. As you can see, it kind of wiggles around a little bit. And that's as simple as that is. So we need to sort of remember the clearances here and here as to where that was sitting so that when we close the dishwasher, it's kind of where we want it to be. So this is great. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this out just a touch. We're gonna tilt it back because we've got to get under here to detach the door. Okay, so the first step to detaching this door with our quarter inch nut driver, so I'm gonna put that down. Again, we're gonna to need to slide the dishwasher out, but in order to, we don't damage the floor, we're gonna take this kick plate off. And this is a, just our quarter inch nut driver and there's, quarter inch here. This is the beauty of magnetic tools. Magnetic tool has forsaken me. There we go. Okay. And that kick plate then just pulls right out. So that allows us to move this dishwasher in and out. These are leveling legs, by the way. If your dishwasher's ever a little out of level, you can adjust. So first thing we're gonna do is slide this out a little bit and then tilt it back because we've gotta to get to our quarter inch screw is right here and right here. <clears throat> and so what we wanna do is first pull this whole unit out just a touch. That's why we disconnected in here so that we, had, we gave ourselves just a little bit of play. And we got, I'm just gonna tilt this back so that we can access the underside here. Notice that it's a little bit rounded back there. Okay, so now we've got access to the underside. We've got a wiring harness that we're gonna need to snip off, not snip off, but unclip. We've got quarter inch driver here, quarter inch driver here. I'm gonna pop these off. We're gonna disconnect the wiring harness that holds the door to the main assembly. Again, that's why it's helpful to kind of tilt this back so it stays. If you had a helper, now would be a good time for that helper to be involved. I don't have a helper. And the other thing we need to do
So here's our wiring harness that's holding the door electronics are being fed into the main control board. So we need to pop this out. There's a clip here. Okay, so we're unclipped from the main board, or the one clip from the body of the washing machine. And these clips just pop right back in. There's little holes in there that they pop into, so we're in good shape there. <clears throat> Okay, so you can see this better. We've popped the, these out. There's a little hole here that pops right back into when we want to remount it. So we've just got to pull this wiring harness directly out. So we're good. We're loose. And now we can go back in and we're going to tilt this door forward. And you're going to see what I mean using those Allen wrenches in just a second. And then we're just going to Pull this door straight off. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our Allen wrenches and see. Pull our door open just a little bit. And we're gonna open this until This hole lines up, and it's just that simple. Okay, now <clears throat> our door should be ready to pop off. We should be able to Lift our door right off the hinges. What I'm going to do is slide back in so that we can utilize the countertop to hold it for us. There we go. Okay, that was a little bit more difficult than I hoped it would be. So I'm going to put this one here for now, and I'm going to get a cover for this table. Be right back. Okay, so we're back. We got a cover for our table, and this is just really to protect uh, the finish on the front of this dishwasher. So I'm going to put this here. And the next step is going to be to separate the inner door from the outer door. So I'm gonna take the, our vent filter off. Probably clean, stand to clean that up a little bit. Okay, so here we are back. I'm gonna adjust my angle here so you can see a little bit better maybe. Um, <clears throat> here we are back. We've got our door. Uh, we need to separate the inner door from the outer door. In order to do that, there are two quarter inch screws and I'm going to take a chair here and see one here and one here. So let's with our quarter inch nut driver. And by the way, if you're, if you're going to do any kind of sort of home repair on appliances, a, quarter, a good quarter inch nut driver is worth its weight in gold because at least with the GE appliances that I have, now I can't speak to all appliances, but at least with the GE appliances that I have, almost everything is assembled with these little quarter inch sort of hex head bolts and it's super easy to uh, work with one of these things. I actually choose to use a, a, a four inch shaft because it's a little easier to, to sort of get into places and, and go. You can get stubby ones. Stubby ones are good too. 
Okay, so now we've got our two quarter inch screws out here and here. In order to separate the inner door from the outer door, we've got to hang on to the inner door and pull on the outer door and that should give us separation. Look at that, how easy that was. And you can see, as we flip this over here, you can see how these clips sort of fit into the slots. So when we reverse that, we're just gonna do exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna turn this over. Um, I'm just gonna go on top of here. I think that's gonna be okay. Now, <clears throat> the next thing we need to get to is, here is our um, unit that we're gonna replace. It is covered by this insulation, which is glued in here. So we're gonna need to get a putty knife and just pry this off. So let me grab a putty knife, I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are back with a putty knife and this is glued in. We've just gotta sort of carefully use our putty knife to get under some of this glue. Okay, well, you know, not the worst job in the world, not the best. We'll re-adhere that. So you can see how easy this repair gets to be now, right? We've got some screws, we've got a a harness, uh, first thing we've got to do is unclip the electronics, okay? Put that to the side. <clears throat> and I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit with my putty knife so that we can reinstall that. Okay. So now it's just as simple as, again, quarter inch nut driver. And I like to keep, as a wise band once said, you gotta keep them separated. So I like to keep all my fasteners unique to their job and that way when i'm putting things back together i'll end up with extra parts and extra parts it's never a good thing when you're disassembling and reassembling machines again we've got a little bit of sort of corrosion and i don't know what that is in there just kind of funk <clears throat> so that could very well be the problem. And you're going to see this kind of whoop, fall right in. So this is our mounting harness. I'm going to put it down just like it came up. We can lift this up. Our, our old unit. I'm going to put it just this way. So that way when I remount the other one, it'll be easy. We grab the other part and we'll install it. We'll put all this thing back together. <clears throat> okay, so that's the way it went. That's the way it goes. So we are going to lay this one in just like the other one was in there. So I'm gonna sort of lay it in. I'm gonna hold it up, drop my mounting harness on, and I'm just gonna start with the corners. It's just the easiest way to do it. And again, better living through magnetics. Right, kids? So that's gonna hold our Hold on there while we reattach. So if you have the choice, you're buying a nut driver, you have the choice between magnetic and non-magnetic, now you know why magnetic is a good idea.
Okay, we have successfully replaced our soap dispenser. So now it's about putting this thing back together. A very important step. We, don't, we do not want to forget to reconnect the electronics within the harness. Okay, so we're in there. And now we put this bad boy back together again. So we're gonna start with trying to get our insulating hub back in. And actually, that's sticking just fine. So no need to do much with that. That, that adhesive was still really pretty tacky that was in there. So you see there's an upside. Upside to everything, kids. All right, so let's flip this back over. Let me get this back on. You can sort of use the, the, the top electronics thing as a guide as to how everything sits. <clears throat> okay, looks like we're in good shape. We're seated against the bolts. And now, just get this remounted. We're gonna take the time, now that we have this disassembled, to take a look at a couple of these areas where we might need to, might be beneficial to clean some things up as we're reassembling this unit. Okay. New dishwasher dispenser is in. My wife's staring at me. They can sense fear. Oh, she ran away. Okay. <clears throat> so remember we talked about these couplings that we're gonna, um, these are the, the things that I unclipped. There's little holes in the drum <clears throat> that these are gonna pop right back into. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug this back in. So this all looks pretty decent. I'm gonna get that vent cover um, thing cleaned up just a little bit. Uh, before we put this door, remount this door back on the washer. And the other thing to keep in mind, <clears throat> here's our new dispenser. You can test these, by the way, by hitting the... Yeah, it looks like it works. Here's the rinse aid dispenser. That looks a lot cleaner than our other one, huh? Okay. <clears throat> Just make sure this seats properly and this, this seal's pretty good. We're going to clean that up just a little bit. Um, and here's our vent cover and I'm just going to take my old toothbrush and give this a clean we're going to make sure it's really thoroughly dry before we put it back on there but that looks pretty good yes I'm aware that I ran that without without the dishwasher connected and it looked like it worked out okay, but it probably wasn't the best idea I've ever had in my life. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to bring your attention to is we took that door off. You see when we ran that clean cycle, see that gunk buildup? So we're gonna take the time to clean that all out. So let me do that uh, and then we will get this remounted on the door, bring the door back over and then we'll bring you back in. Okay, so we've gotten the um, channel cle cleared out there gotten that cleaned up a little bit. We've gotten our vent cover clean. Uh, let's go ahead and remount this door and uh, go from there. So let me grab our door. Let's go ahead and get it facing the correct way. Appear to have lost a piece of our door. It's not a good sign. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so we've got, we're mounted in here, we're mounted in here. Be careful not to strip these screws. I happen to have a, a spare and was able to get this mounted in. So we're good to go. I'm gonna turn this back on. Um, and first, we're gonna reconnect our drain line into the garbage disposal and reconnect our water supply. Okay, so here we are back under the sink. We are going to find our water supply. There's our water supply. Let's make sure we're not running it through any electrical supply lines. That wouldn't be a good idea. Okay, so we're got a water supply kind of hand tight now. <clears throat> Grab our 5 8 open ended wrench. Give it a quick tight down. Now we're going to grab our drain line. Oops. There's water in there, kids. Clamp back on. Put that hand tight. <clears throat> Gently turn our water supply back on here. Monitor for leaks. Don't see any right this moment, but it always is advisable to keep an eye on newly connected connections for things like that. So I'm going to leave these tabs just where they are right now in case we do get a little bit of the drip. But it looks like we're in pretty good shape right now. So we've got our water supply reconnected. We've got our drain line reconnected. Let's get our power back on, run a test, see if this dishwasher works. So we've reinstalled our dishwasher. It looks good. We're gonna get the power back on. We're gonna run a cycle. We're gonna see how this works. Now I'm gonna leave the kick plate off just in case we get any sort of leakage. Uh, I wanna know about that right away and I'll have to towels standing by. We're just gonna check underneath once again. See if we're not getting any drips. Doesn't look like we are right now. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get the power back on. Let's see what we can. There we go, 26. 26 disposal. That's where the power is, apparently for our dishwasher. So, theoretically, Hey, we got lights. That's good. So let's grab a pellet. Let's open her up, put our pellet in, shut. We got a load in there. We'll be able to tell whether those saucy dishes get cleaned. We're gonna close it up. Crush your fingers, kids. Here we go. I'll check back with you when we see whether this works. We're in mid-cycle. Looks good. Sounds good. I hear water slashing around in there. That's good. Don't see water out here. That's also good. Don't see any water dripping. Don't see any drain lines dripping. So, so far, so good. We'll see if the dishes come out clean. And if so, we may be able to call this one a success. I'll keep you posted. Looks like we're still in good shape. It's still running. It's going through its cycle. <clears throat> we're dry here. We're dry here. I think we're in really good shape right now. Um, I'm just gonna take this towel <clears throat> and wipe any moisture that is on there 
from when we mounted it. And then that way, if we feel any new stuff, we'll know that it's new as opposed to old. Right, so I think right now we're in really good shape. So the only thing left, it doesn't look like anything's leaking. The only thing left is when this finishes to make sure everything's clean. So we'll keep you all posted. Hey folks, let's see if the dishwasher did what we needed it to do. So this is a big reveal. We did a test wash. Let's see. That's a good sign. No soap left in the dispenser. That's good. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, clean dishes. How about that? We fixed it. So folks, if you want to do that project, um, the part itself, uh, 28 bucks, I think. Um, eight or nine bucks to ship it. And uh, there you go, it works. So anyway, that's the deal. And um, thanks for joining us on DIY with the Doc. A successful project, how about that? Take care everybody, bye-bye. Hi, buddy boy. How you doing, buddy boy? How you doing, buddy boy? Hi, pal. This is what happens when you lay on the floor and your dog is not used to you laying on the floor. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy.